So, of course, Chris having the higher seed at that number one spot, he is going to go first in this game. Um, knowing the matchup here between Amber and Steel, Ruby and Amethyst, you know, we, we know what Ruby Amy is looking for, that Flynn, that Sisu. But on this Amber Steel side, what is uh, Edmund looking for? So a big part of Amber Steel is finding a whole or, new sorry, world. It Chris. Is, yeah, it is finding a whole new world that is very critical to the deck strategy. You want to see it shift characters out early and cast out a whole new world via that shifted character. Also dump a lot of the cards in hand, whether it's onto the field or putting them in ink. You want to increase that card advantage that you would get from casting a whole new world. You want your opponent to be discarding more cards than you, you to be effectively netting more cards than them on the draw. From Edmund's side, you've seen Edmund highly prioritize things like card draw against Emerald Steel, some of these discard decks. I think you're going to see Edmund do something very different against a whole new world deck. Mm -hmm. will, actually, will actually try to utilize as much of his hand as possible in the early game to hedge against a potential early whole new world deck. Yeah, and they both players now have altered their opening hand. And gosh, I can't imagine the amount of nerves um, going on. But these players, I know that they have been playing in top competitions like this. And the more you play, the more those nerves kind of go away. But when you're in a situation like this, as a player, you've got to be feeling a little anxious going into this. Yeah, I think it depends on the player, but oftentimes by the time you get this deep into a tournament and this deep into something like a single elimination, those nerves have kind of started to go away. Um, you know you're there for a reason and you're ready to compete and you've sort of shown throughout the day that you know exactly what you're doing. I'm sure at this time you are sufficiently warmed up and we do start with a Robin Hood to lead off from Chris. Yeah, it's incredible to me the amount of, you know, it's a, it's a lot of a mental game, you know, in a card game like Disney Lorcana where you really have to make sure that you're you're staying focused in the moment, not letting a past, you know, win or loss, you know, either way, kind of taking up space in your mind, but that you can really focus on what's going on right in front of you. A couple things I want to call out. Edmund did actually ink friends on the other side. That is very congruent with what we talked about earlier by trying to utilize as many cards in hand, not prioritize the card draw here early against this whole new world deck. You know, one of the things that can make this matchup particularly bad for Ruby Amethyst is actually those flutes. Those flutes. Yes. Yes, they are what <laughs> swung the matchup. Originally, Ruby Amethyst did have a good matchup into Amber Steel, but as you add the flutes into the deck, it actually makes it closer to a bad matchup. Flutes are also very good against Ruby Sapphire, and we've seen that on display on the stream throughout this day. This is actually Lawrence coming down. This is 0 4, the quest for 2, and says while this character has no damage, he gets plus 4 attack. Yeah, Lawrence is a great card. This is a side character that we see in Princess and the Frog. So he's the, like, you know, manservant to Prince Naveen. And I kind of love that the theming of this ability where, you know, he's in the art on him really fits his character. He's, he's a lot of fun. I just want to call it as well. We saw a second ink on the friends on the other side for Edmund. Now we're passing back yeah. over to Chris. Chris does have access to that whole that early whole new world, but does not have the shift character to uh, play it very early, which is going to make it so Edmund can ink up and utilize most of his hand before we get over to that whole new world turn. Also, without a character to sing a whole new world, one of the best things that can happen in this game for Edmund is that Chris actually has to exert ink in order to play a whole new world. That is a very good scenario for our Ruby Amethyst player. Which we did just see that he exerted his ink to uh, to sing uh, and along came Zeus on that Maleficent that was down, really just trying to keep control of the board here. Yep, absolutely. Keep control of the board, activate that flute, and also from what I understand, looks like there is in hand, there's a whole new world, but that also looks to be, I'm trying to remember is the song. Is it world's, world's greatest cri criminal no mind? <laughs> exactly. Yes. World's greatest <laughs> criminal, cri criminal mind, which is not too good against this Ruby Amethyst deck right now. We do see the queen come off the top. Queen is one of those early shift targets. Unfortunately, we have the one drop in the form of Robin Hood, so the queen is not going to do it. We do, have to pretend, we do have to ink that queen, it looks like. And we're going to play the whole play, new world. Yeah. Gosh, that's got to feel bad for Chris. You know, one of the stars of this deck is Ariel, the spectacular singer. And he wasn't able to find her in his opening hand. And so having to use his ink to sing or to play a whole new world has got to feel a little bad. Yeah, it's very tempo negative for Chris. And as we pass over to Edmund, Edmund is definitely in a good position now that has happened. You know, one of the scariest, thing when, scariest things when you play against Amber Steel is them getting out those early characters, singing those whole new worlds on turn turn two or turn three and just netting a huge amount of cards above you and also putting many many characters onto the board before you can have access something like madame medusa to hit pesky threats but also things like be prepared to clear that board be prepared is a very good card against a more aggressive oriented amber steel deck yeah uh, it looks like uh, edmund did decide to challenge into lawrence with the sisu what do you think about that 
No, I think it's absolutely correct. You want to you want to take control of of the field here. You want to again with a whole new world. As even though we've played one, you really want to insulate against another. So you're not going to see Edmund prioritize card draw at this point in the game you're going to see him prioritize sort of getting onto the board controlling the board and at this point being being the aggressor so this is a very aggressive line we have flint into sisu something we've talked about mm -hmm. all weekend long yep. how powerful that is and that's equally powerful against amber steel here amber steel does have access to targeted removal to potentially deal with that flint i think i see one hand let the storm rage on let the storm rage on and we do see another whole new world in uh, chris's hand as well so he's just getting wonder by wonder with the, a whole new world into his hand this game which is absolutely you want you see chris all the way up at 10 lore right there despite sort of the slow start and chris's deck when it comes to amber steel is definitely a much more aggressive oriented amber steel deck we see the blues in the list and we of course see this lawrence which has now hit the field for the second time of course the flutes you know edmund needs to find a find room to turn the corner and start pressuring the lore count uh to sort of combat Chris, because those flutes, in a sense, they do they do represent a level of inevitability. The Ruby Amethyst deck cannot mm -hmm. deal with those items in any way. Yeah, yeah, there's no answer, really, that Edmund has for that flute. Um, so, I mean, gosh, it's like the best that he can do is not let Chris keep characters on the board that he can sing with, forcing Chris to play his songs by using his resources. Absolutely, that, and that is definitely the game plan for Edmund. Oh, we have another Sisu come down. Uh, he doesn't have that Flynn in play, which is too bad, but of course it makes sense that Chris would want to say goodbye to Flynn Rider. Yeah, we do see a blue off the top here as well. The, just the aggression out of Chris here is really hard for this Ruby Amethyst deck to deal with. Which is interesting because uh, I know that this deck, the Ruby Amethyst deck, typically if you can get that Flynn Sisu combo out, can be the aggressive deck, but here we're, we're really seeing Chris take the lead. Yeah, Flynn Sisu is a great combo, but on the draw against a Steel deck, it's often not going to come to fruition because Steel has a lot of targeted cheap removal. Some of the other inks do not have access to great removal for Flynn. That's why you see it be such a powerful card. As a two cost that comes down as a 2-2 two -two that doesn't necessarily do too much to mm -hmm. the board, it's actually not that great in a vacuum, and it's not that great of a card against Steel specifically, because if you match it up against a card like... Um, let the Storm Rage on. Let the Storm Rage on is one more cost. It, it it gets rid of the Flynn, banishes it, but then also draws an additional card and replaces itself. That's not a great trade for you as the Ruby Amethyst player. Yeah, and we did just see Chris play Let the Storm Rage on on that Maleficent that Edmund had on the board. So the cold does seem to be bothering uh, Edmund right now. <laughs> and we do see that blue with Bodyguard come down. That Baloo is really fun card. I really like Baloo. Um, he has zero strength, um, three willpower, but and he quests for one. But the fun thing about Baloo is that if he's banished, you gain two lore, which, you know, it, it might might not make your tail spin, but it might make your head spin thinking of how you're going to answer that card. Definitely makes my tail spin. That's a <laughs> lot of lore to be gained, and it's really tough for uh, for the Ruby Amethyst deck to deal with, because as we go into turn seven, you have the potential option for something like a Be Prepared. Wouldn't be great. It's a, it's a two. You know, would effectively be a three for three trade. But then also we're pushing Chris back up to that fifteen lore with a flute on board. Yes. I mean, Chris is, <laughs> despite despite the board looking relatively a parity. I know the lore count is very different. Chris is definitely in the lead with that with that flute on the field as well as that blue representing three lore, mm -hmm. sort of regardless of what Edmund does. But Edmund's got to follow up with this Queen's Castle and this Flynn. Yeah, that you know, Chris played flute on turn two and it has been putting in a lot of work in this game for him wonder how Edmund can try to stabilize here because it's not it's less about sort of winning the board but you actually have to stop Chris's characters from gaining any of the lore that is just printed in the bottom right because they if they even quest once we're getting to such a high lore counter that Chris is just going to win this game with the flutes and Chris has so many songs in the deck that it's almost guaranteed yeah, I mean, he has four lore on the board with just his characters. If he can sing his song, that's an, that's five. That would put him up to 18 this turn, uh, which is dangerously close to 20 for Edmund. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like we are back over to Chris's turn. We're going to ink the, the Robin Hood. Go ahead and shift that Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. Which Robin Hood is just a great character. He really is the champion of Sherwood, and he can be a champion of many games. Such a strong card, and oh, he's hurling Thunderbolt once more here. And he thunderbolted <laughs> his own blue as well to win the game. Wow! Right wow! Wow! What do you think of that move there with the with? Uh, 
with thunderbolting your own blue, your own character. Yeah. <laughs> so they're altering, or they have altered their hands maybe already. Uh, yeah, I think that Edmund being on the play, like you say, it is going to give him a little advantage here, especially with that flint Sisu combo. Yeah, so currently altering the hands because we see Chris draw the first seven there. Um, Edmund opts to throw four back. I do see Sisu in hand. I'm not sure if Edmund had the flint or not. Over on Chris's side, can't quite see what he has there. So Flynn Sisu, like, like we mentioned, is a powerful combination of cards, but particularly against these steel decks and these low-to-the-ground steel decks, I'm not sure if I would be looking for it in the hand alteration phase, mm -hmm. although, you know, it is, it is a great question to ask your opponent because your opponent does need to respond. They do need to do something about that. They cannot let it just run away with the game. But having access to things like what's not on this list, but Baboom, but also things like Let the Storm Rage On, Steel is just well-positioned to deal with that card combination. Yeah. So it looks like Chris is still altering his hand. He had a couple whole new worlds in there. Rapunzel. Rapunzel is another great card that has been around since set one. It has been strong and remains strong and a staple of any Amber deck. It's just so uh, great to have that Rapunzel come down, heal a character, get some cards. Um, but she is a, a little a card that you'd want maybe a little later. Would you keep a card like that in your opening hand? It is one of the most powerful cards in the game. Um, it does represent you know the possibility of so much draw. Your opponent needs to be thinking about it uh, in the game. But I want to take I want to draw attention to Chris just pulled a double flute off the top. That's oh, did one, he? Yeah, wow. that's one of the best <laughs> things that you can have because um, it gives you that inevitability across the finish line. It is not something that you want to see as a Ruby Amethyst player. No. Is those early flutes? Oh, there's a world's greatest criminal mind going into the inkwell on Chris's side. And we do have that Flynn come down on turn two from Edmund. Absolutely. And if Chris is going to need to respond to this, he needs to respond to it quick, either by putting something on the field that has a higher strength or equal strength or simply removing it. And we are going to see the Ursula, yes. which is actually a 1-4. So we're going to potentially activate this Flynn. Yeah, it looks like the player missed it, which because so he quest yes, because he quested for just two after questing he, for yeah, one. Yeah, he had quested for one on his previous turn, so it does look like he missed Flynn's ability, which does happen sometimes where you missed uh, missed a trigger. But um, yeah, and then we have the Sisu coming down right after here. There's that Flynn Sisu combo. So back over to Chris. Chris now has another chance to either remove that Flynn or put something onto the field that has more strength, which I think is pretty reasonable as we head into turn three. I haven't seen uh, Chris's hand exactly. You know, worst case scenario. Okay, there we do see uh, see the queen come down, which is a two two. Currently, the Sisu has much higher strength, but we could change that quite quickly. And we do have a singer four to actually remove that Sisu. Yeah, that Ursula is uh, just a two cost character, but she's a singer four again. This I love the Disney Lurkana theming that we have. Um, Ursula as Vanessa, she had stolen Ariel's voice, and so she has that singer ability where she can sing songs up to cost four, which along came Zeus is a four cost card and easily able to take out that Sisu. I'm interested to see how soon we see these flutes run out. Yeah, I do think that if... Oh. Sorry, that was just yeah. a Madam and Fox. <laughs> Fox. Fox came in. <laughs> Madam and Fox bouncing back the... Um, <laughs> Bouncing back to Flynn Rider, not yes. something you usually want to do. You want to have Madam and Fox bounce back things that either get you value when they mm. leave or these one drops. Actually, you almost always want to hit something like a goat or a rabbit. Rabbits. So that, that's mm -hmm. very indicative of Edmund having a very clunky hand here. Not an ideal start for Edmund. And Chris, with the double flutes in hand, could probably turn this game around pretty quickly. Yeah, Edmund ha does have a rabbit in hand. I wonder if he just wanted to try to take that singer Ursula off the board. Absolutely, so. but I think he would have preferred to do it in a more efficient way on yeah. a future turn. So it's kind of has his hand forced either because he doesn't have, well, he did have a turn for um, in the form of rabbit. I'm not sure what his inkable count looks like in that hand, but still not an ideal way to sort of curve out, right? It's not the plan you would usually want to be doing. Yeah. And we do have the Queen Commanding Presence shifting here. This is a really fun card. When when this character quests, then a chosen character gets minus four strength and a chosen, sorry, a chosen character gets plus four strength. So you, it can really make a big difference here. Yeah, so what Chris is thinking about right now, Chris has Whole New World and Double Flute in hand. Needs to draw an inkable off the top to play Double Flute um, and then... 
sing, sing a whole, whole new, new world. world. Sing a whole new world. <laughs> get seven more. Get two more lore. And that, that's got to be Chris's game plan moving forward. I think if Chris does not hit the Inkable, it's not the end of the world, right? You can still play the one flute and play Ooh. a whole new world. That's probably oh. what you didn't want to see. Yeah, Maui coming down, taking away his singer. Yep, that is not what you wanted to see, but we are going to find the Inkable and play the double flute here. Mm -hmm. But Chris is put in a situation where Chris really needs to find an Inkable off the top here. Edmund's going to start pulling away with this game. Ooh, Ooh, a Queen's Castle coming down. <laughs> and that's pretty much the best thing that Edmund could have in the scenario. He's going to go ahead and move that Maui as well. Chris does find the Inkable. Is going to cast a whole new world. Will activate both flutes off the back of this. Going to draw seven new cards. Yes, but he's exerted all his ink now and unfortunately is going to have to pass turn um, because he can't play anything else this, this turn, which, man, that... Queen getting taken off the board by Maui was not what Chris wanted to see. Yeah, absolutely not. And now Edmund drew two cards for the turn after the trigger on the Queen's Castle. And while Chris does have another whole new world in hand, Edmund is firmly advantaged right now. We talked about how dangerous two flutes can be, but just due to the other stumbles that have happened through the course of this game, I actually think that Edmund's in an okay position against mm -hmm. them, but needs to focus on pressuring that lore total and not giving Chris enough room to win the game with those flutes. So what do you think of Chris's game plan, has, how it's shifted now with this new board state? Well, with Double Flynn coming onto the field here, I think <laughs> yes. Chris, is, uh, Chris has a little bit of, is, has to survive, right? Has to stop these Flynns and yeah. has to probably deal with this Maui. It does have the four damage counters on it, it looks like, and that is just a must deal with. But that being said, both Flynns would, both Flynns would trigger. This is like the best answer possible, there. by yeah. the way. The Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. <laughs> so it moves the character on the Queen's Castle and it, yeah, of course, does one to each of these flints. You had to both remove the Maui and have something to back it up to stop the flints from triggering. Because if yes. we were getting six lore a turn, it's just too much. Actually, it would be eight lore. Yes. The, uh, yes, yeah, it would be six off of Flynn's trigger plus whatever he could quest with. So, yeah, Tinkerbell taking care of Maui. So now Tinkerbell has the most strength on the board and Flynn's will not trigger. And Tinkerbell's just a fun card. She's She's always been fun and... Really, really strong, especially uh, in this matchup. I think able to do a lot of damage, literally, across the board here. So it looks like we're going to ink our third friends on the other side from the game. Again, that's due to this being a whole new world matchup. We're going to go ahead and play that goat, cement, and play another goat on top of that, cementing ourselves as the oh. beatdown deck in this matchup. And Edmund's going to go ahead and quest, and Chris has a big question to answer. How can you deal with this Queen's Castle? How can you deal with all these characters? Because Edmund, at this point, is one, two, three... Four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine with the goats is pretty is getting is representing game. Yeah. So Chris needs to deal with this. He is taking his time thinking here. What does he have in his hand? Baloo, uh, world's greatest criminal mind, another whole new world. And not ah. notably, Chris does have the Tinkerbell already on the field, which can deal with two of these threats. Mm -hmm. Yes, because Tinkerbell, of course, when she challenges into a character, if it's banished, she, you can choose another character to do two damage onto. And I think we're going to see that. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. We're going to go ahead and get rid of those Flynns. We're going to leave the Bluffs in here. Yeah, those, those Flynns needed to go. <laughs> <laughs> Still, Chris in a yeah. very, very tough position. I don't know how Amber Steele can navigate from the from this position. Yeah, Edmund is up 13 lore. Chris sitting at just two. Man, it looked so promising, him having those double flutes early on, but it the game just shifted so quickly for him. I honestly feel like if the queen had been able to sing mm. that whole new world, we yeah. would have been playing a very different game right very now. Very different game. Yep, we did see a goat be banished by along came Zeus. But, yeah, Edmund is just yep. really, really able to take it home here. And goat bounce <laughs> takes it. So we're going to head to a game three for our finals. I was telling you earlier, I, we've, we've passed a few games at, you know, day two here. And I've only... This is pretty exciting. I, I do want to make a remark that Edmund was the player that was, he was so excited in his interview that he had made it to top eight. And then he said, well, that was my goal, but now I'm gunning for number one. And here we see him now in the finals. And I just, I just think that's wonderful.
playing for glory. So we see the hand sculpting phase, and I really want to pay attention to what Chris potentially keeps in hand. So I was actually throwing the flutes back, opting to look for that whole new world game plan. So flutes, while I feel like they're impactful versus Ruby Amethyst, Chris is showing us here that they, while they are good, you don't really want multiples of them in the early parts of the game. And over on Edmund's side, I think he drew four new cards. He got some Chernabogs, some foxes in hand. I saw a rabbit. Uh, I didn't see if he had a Sisu or a Flynn. Um, but yeah, a couple foxes, which are going to be good, but yeah. Honestly, I, I really don't feel like I'm looking for Flynn Rider on the draw in this matchup because maybe we go immediately into the turn at three of Chris. Chris mm -hmm. could shift and then sing. And sing. Those, yep, sing one of those removal spells. I'd rather prioritize trying to develop things with sort of bigger willpower than that on the field if I can. All right, so Chris, like we said, is going to be on the play here. We see him ink a tank which was one of my favorite things to say in Disney Larkana, ink a tank and play the queen. Okay, so I can't see if Chris has the backup queen in hand. Oh, I do. He does. He, he has does. the shift queen. Wow. So Which has can come down, turn two. Yep, and has the, the whole new world ready to go. I'm interested to see. Yep, okay, there, there we go. it is. And what are we singing here? Are we singing? We have one of two whole new worlds. I think that's a blue and a flute. Wow. Do you think we're going to see a whole new world on turn two here? I do. It's very possible because the net. Those the are the only two songs he has, so <laughs> we must be seeing a whole new world here. Uh, the, Chris, actually, I believe he passed the turn over. I think we're back over Oh, to he did. Turn. Yeah, he quested with the queen. So he he must be waiting till next turn so he can get his flute on the board exactly. before playing that whole new world, which makes complete sense. So so he has the two lore now, and knowing that next turn he's going to be putting that flute down and gaining more lore by singing a whole new world. And definitely not a clear decision as well. So Chris definitely. Oh, this is oh, what this wow. is. What, by the way, this is what Chris doesn't want to see. Turn so we're going in, we're going to the turn three whole new world. Your opponent is on Ruby Amethyst. You, the last thing you want to see is you them to play two one drops and actually get those cards out of their hand before this whole new world mm -hmm. is cast. So that's actually worst case scenario for Chris. Chris opting to play the blue over the flutes. Or over the flute. The flute. Is definitely much more efficient. But over the course of this game, will it gain more lore? Yeah, that's a good question. What do you think about, I mean, maybe there wasn't a better decision. It was just a decision there. It stops the trade on the queen as well. So yeah. the Chernabox followers, in you know, outside of a Mountain Men Fox, the Chernabox followers, um, they can't clear the queen quite as easily. The queen is a 4-3. And mm. you could have run two Chernabox two of them followers into, into the, the queen. Yeah. Sure. With Baloo, it as a 0-3, though, that is no longer possible unless we have something like a Mountain Men Fox. So we do see the three-cost Sisu come down here for Edmund. We'll pass back over to turn four for Chris Coy. I've never seen so many of Chernabog's followers together before. <laughs> True, that's because they, all, they always banish when they yes, cross. Yes, yes. Yes. All of Chernabog's followers have been summoned, and they are here hanging out in this game. A perfect example of, he ah. of hedging against that whole new world. You don't need to be drawing those additional cards because your opponent is representing a, a additional a whole new world on the following turn. Um, worst case scenario, though, would be singing Grab Your Sword and losing all three of those, but that is how it is. That is how it is. Back over to Chris, getting up to four ink. Ah, uh, and between that, Grab Your Swords and then singing Along Came Zeus has completely cleared Edmund's board here. Mm -hmm. And that is the play pattern of Amber Steel is to play threats, 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 um, you know, remove your stuff, remove your stuff, sing a whole new world, draw seven new cards, do it all again, and it can just very efficiently play out its entire hand. Yeah. So Queen's Castle, very, very good card, but not as good against the Queen. Yeah, the Queen ah, being able to sing pretty much all of the songs that I think he has in his deck. So the queen actually has this ability called Who is the Fairest, which says whenever this character quests, chosen opposing character mm -hmm. gets minus four, and the chosen character gets plus four. That really helps dealing with the queen's castle. It's actually one of the most effective ways to deal with it. You, of course, you can also sing Along Came Zeus to deal damage to that. Um, but the queen itself is probably one of the most 
menacing threats when it comes to what can actually deal with the Queen's castle. Well, this is very thematic. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's starting to dawn on me yes. how thematic this is. <laughs> yes, how can we deal with the Queen's castle with the Queen herself? <laughs> I wonder if we get to up my pun counter after that one. Yeah, absolutely. So we did see Ariel, the spectacular singer, finally make an appearance here in this game. And he looked like he grabbed, what was it? I didn't see what song he grabbed. And we did see the queen going, running into the queen's castle there. Yep, and the queen's castle is definitely one of the scarier threats that Ruby Amethyst can put in front of this amber steel. I, I think it was Let the Storm Rage On, by the way. Oh, Let the Storm Rage On is the the card that Ariel was able to get, yes. And uh, Maui coming down and saying goodbye to the queen. He has vacated her from the castle. <laughs> Maui's a fantastic answer. I think I potentially might see a Long Cape Zeus mm -hmm. in hand. I wonder if that will be sung here by Ariel to get rid of that castle. No, it looks like we're going to quest... And also could not be a long game Zeus in hand. So that Queen's Castle will trigger for Edmund. We're back over to Edmund's turn. Edmund going into turn six here. So we have things like Madame Medusa mm -hmm. coming online, which is very, very good against this Amber Steel deck. Notably, Chris Coy, no whole new world at hand. No whole new world. Nope. Looks like maybe he has... Well, he has the blue with the Storm Rage on, and then two along came Zeus. Yep, two along came Zeus. But the Storm Rage on can draw an additional card. If it hits something like this turn of box followers, mm -hmm. I think that's a good target for it. Yeah. And I think that along came Zeus. That or actually, we might be attacking into the... Uh, the Queen's... Person challenging the Queen's Castle. The Queen's Castle with along came Zeus. Yeah, I think that's one of the great things about... Not only is it uh, an action that's singable, it's a song, along came Zeus, but it does five damage to a character or location. Fantastic top deck here for Chris Coy as we find the Ariel Singer to actually look further into the deck for that whole new world that's mm -hmm. going to be absolutely critical to Chris coming back into this game. And there's our blue friend again. And Chris really just able to take care of Edmund's side of the board in that turn. That, that seemed like a, a really big turn for him. Very interesting. So looks like Chris had three, three ink available. Um, and opted to not play the Ariel, maybe to... Oh, okay, looks like he just not exerted it. Uh, he had not exerted it, yeah. Okay, very helpful. All right, we have our rabbit drawing a card here. I'm going to go... Bouncing ahead. rabbits. Yep. <laughs> so maybe Edmund getting the read that Chris doesn't have a whole new world in hand, mm -hmm. so able to prioritize drawing cards. Chris, though, with this Ariel, can actually find a whole new world and go ahead and sing it. And do we find it? Double flute. Does not. He doesn't. He finds two flutes, but not Not only does he not find a whole new world, uh, he does not find any songs at all with that Ariel, which was really, really unfortunate. Yeah, I think that Chris really needs to find a way to generate card draw, whether that's through a whole new world or some other means, because right now it does feel like if Edmund is able to find something like a Be Prepared, Chris is going to be in a really tough spot and could potentially get tempoed out of the game via Be Prepared coming down and then follow-up threats like Mata Medusa and other just good threats on the field that can challenge into his characters. Yes, he did play Let the Storm Rage On, and it was able to draw one more card. I didn't see what he grabbed off the top of his deck there. Um, it is the Ursula Singer, the oh, singer. The Ursula form. Singer. And there is and that Be Prepared we talked prepared. about. Be Prepared. There it is. So here we go. Edmund, ha <laughs> Edmund has the possibility yes. to start locking Chris out of this game. So Chris is going to be deploying maybe one threat a turn, can potentially be stuck with songs in hand that are not very good. This is, yeah. Ed this is Edmund's chance. So Chris is already at 11 lore. Edmund can pull back into this game. A, oof, this, is, this is a very, very tight game. The yeah. top deck is going to be huge here for Chris. Chris needs to find a relevant threat or potentially needs to find something like a whole new world. We're going to go ahead and play a goat here and develop a queen's and castle And a queen's it. castle behind it. Wow. I do think that Chris can actually deal with the uh, the queen's castle unusually well because it has double removal. Or actually just has these... No, he has double Zeus in hand, so mm -hmm. that is relevant. But that being said... Oh, Ooh, that wow. is worst case Sisu. scenario. Now, this is really interesting because this uh, legendary Sisu, empowered sibling, is not... 
often included in the ruby amethyst decks. It is not. Edmund talked about it being spiced, and I think it just won him. It the is. I think it got very yes. close, or it did just win him the finals of the Lorcana Challenge yeah. in Dallas. Yeah, that's very spicy. That was an absolute <laughs> blowout. Two for one in both of those Ursulas with two Zeus, uh, one came Zeus in hand, which would have been used to get rid of the Queen's Castle. Queen's Castle deployed behind that as well. What can Chris do to come back for this? Yeah, and not only did Sisu clear those Ursulas, but Sisu also quests for three and is hanging out there. All his characters are hanging out in the Queen's Castle. <laughs> I mean... I knew it, yeah. I could, yep. see, I could see Chris breathing. Chris, Chris was breathing, and, Anna, and Chris was starting to breathe in anticipation of that win. Knew the game was locked up, and Ruby Amethyst wins the Disney Lorcana Challenge.